All right, let's get this show on the road. Let's see here. Let's see. Hello? Hello. Give the cat a treat, huh? We're gonna have to hold that to the end of the program. One, because I just fed the cat. And two, we have on topic things to do. <laughs> but don't worry, we'll get around to it. I have to run the hitbox here. But what's good? Hello. How was Wednesday? It's Kev. What's up, Breezy? I see you, man. What's up, Zaku? What's up, Kyra? I see y'all. What is good? All right. Let me actually let me go back to the replay menu and make sure this is the first one. Round one. Fight. Yeah, we'll see about getting the cat a treat. Probably have to save it to the end because uh, I just fed him, so he's laying down chilling. If I can't, if I can't, if the cat is not interested in a treat, we will take a picture of the cat. All right, so we are going to look at the CPT East uh, Grand Finals. This was a net play tournament, but you get what you get. Advantage of the net play tournaments is that we can use the hitbox viewer while we watch them. Uh, this happened just this weekend, and it was Smug, Fight. aka Doctor Smuggles underscore or Doctor underscore Smuggles underscore PhD, Doctor Smuggles Doctor versus. Uh, shine right um, both of these players have been in the Street Fighter scene competitively for a, a pretty decent while at least at least several years now um, both of these guys were also competitive during the Street Fighter 4 era and they're from the same sub community right so they, they probably played against each other more than a more than a few times Hey, what's up, puppy? I see you. Yo, I appreciate that, man. With the five gifted? Honorable. Respectable. Paying my rentable. <laughs> what's up, man? Thank you so much for that. That's a... That's a how generous of you. With our powers combined, we are truly paying my rent. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, these players are probably pretty familiar with each other. Um... Things to note off the bat. Let me use the let me use the other pause function here. It was September. Hmm. Okay. So firstly, freezing the game. Freezing the game with uh, frame trapped makes the replays way out. Secondly, we can see Smug is using V Trigger Two and V Skill Two. Right. Um, this is the command grab and the charge up that empowers his rush punches. Uh, furthermore, Ibuki, right? Shine is, is uh, V skill one. That's the poke and the chargeable poke and the shuriken, right? The sh shuriken for mix ups. It's probably. Now, I've, I've seen a little bit of this, but I haven't watched it all the way through. But just from prior experience, we could, we could probably expect um, Smug to be a little bit more aggressive, right? Like, he's generally pretty an offensive, pretty much an offensive player. Uh, he goes for a lot of resets. He bullies people. Um, and judging by the amount of matches that are, that are here, we're, we're probably just going to watch Shine get consumed. Like, we're probably just going to see Shine get consumed. Shine generally is a little bit more of a tentative player. He's more willing to sit around in the middle of the screen and, and wait for his moment. Um, 
more about capitalizing on the opponent's mistakes and less about making the opponent make mistakes whereas as as smug as is the opposite right so let's turn this replay on oh this is a this is a whiff punish i mean this is like so early in the match right um it's important to attempt to get as much information about the opponent as you can now smug is in the winner's bracket right which means that to lose he has to lose two sets right shine has to beat him in a first of three put him in the loser's bracket and then eliminate uh eliminate him from the loser's bracket right this is their second set from the top eight yeah that that would also be important to know right because i mean these these players are from the same area so they probably play a lot together anyway but still still in general right you need this is like the information gathering round and um what's significant here is that the 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 amount of games you can lose and not be eliminated is a significant resource right so in this situation smug can actually be a lot less conservative than shine can and he can get away with it right because even if he loses one or two games it's generally still okay right he's got he's got lives left but uh shine doesn't have that luxury so looking at i mean this is this isn't really like gonna this isn't like gonna tell you the whole story but i find it surprising that shine is the aggressor here right he's more active in the in in just the first couple seconds he gets a he gets hit with a a pretty bad whiff punish like this is so bad ibuki is a low health character right she has a 925 no 925 950 she's she's one of the low health characters so getting clipped by balrog right here every time every time he gets touched it's significant like it's it's real significant balrog um Barog will eat her, eat her alive. So this right here, dash forward. What is this? Is this minus? I don't believe this is real. Dash forward after rush punch. Maybe if they, maybe they quick rise low, the low rush punch, right? We should bring up the frame data. This is, this is actually something you would think I would know how to do this because I've done it so much, but this is actually something important to do. When you're looking at a replay, you want to make sure that you have frame data on deck, All right? So I'm going to use FAT online. Um, great resource. Uh, it's better on the phone. This is a mobile app. You can go on the iPhone's app store or Google play or whatever, and you can look up a frame assistant tool. So anyway, let's look at uh let's look at old Rog. Where is he? Balrog, right here. So we're gonna look for the low dash punch. Right? And which one did Smug do here? He did medium. He did medium kick medium kick dash low. Right. <laughs> yeah you got to get in the fat discord they're actually really cool everybody who works on it hats in um dark onion standard toaster they're, they're all cool guys so on hit here we're gonna get plus 25 frame advantage so so this is so this column right then this uh advantage on knockdown quick rise and back rise this is going to tell us what smugs oki options are right and what i mean by oki is what can he do what possible actions can he take to 
take advantage of his opponent being knocked down, right? That's that's what, Oki or Okazeme is what you do when the opponent is knocked down, right? So we see here if if he if he hits Shine with this move, and Shine does a quick rise, he has 20 frames to act, right? And then we see if Shine does a back rise, he has 25 frames to act, right? So it's plus 25 because here Shine does a back rise, right? Now, in interesting to note, Shine is pressing throw on, on back rise. Look at this. You see him? Light punch, light kick, right? Down back, back, light punch, light kick, back, right? This... I always say this. You, you see people do this all the time. This is a really bad habit. You do not want to do this. You want to quick rise and back rise with either two punches or two kicks. And that's it. If you put in directions or if you do a punch and a kick, you're not... You, you may not get what you intend, right? Because right here, even though kicks take priority over punches, if Shine does down back throw, he might get could accidentally get quick rise, right? Um, the reason he gets back rise here is because he hits back right here and then he hits back again, right? Right here, he could, I mean, he wouldn't get quick rise. He'd get no rise, right? Um, this is a weird way to do it. Uh, whether he intended to back rise or not, I don't know, but this is like a very messy way to do it. You see a lot of players do this and it's just theoretically suboptimal. You might be able to intentionally quick rise or back rise the way you want every time by doing some weird input, but ideally you want to do it with just two kicks or two punches. Okay. Um, another thing is that, say for example, if Shine did this, he's got a down back and down forward. If for some reason he wanted to do like a reversal move, these inputs may mess with his reversal input because the input leniency in Street Fighter V is so great. So this is just, not the end of the world, but a, a bad habit. You don't really want to go about doing this. So anyway, he back rises. Smugs plus 25. What does he do? He dashes. Dashes forward, right? So let's see how 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 many frames does it take for Balrog to dash. Right. So to forward dash, it takes 17. Right? It takes him 17 frames. So that means that Smug it should be plus 8. Right. All right. So Smug is plus eight right here. Balrog is plus eight. This means he can still act eight frames faster than Ibuki can. So let's see what he does. He goes for a throw. Right. So is this throw a media attack? Right. And uh, so a media attack will hit during the active frames right so you see all this frame data this big ass spreadsheet of frame data let's look at let's look at throw here we go forward throw in street fighter 5 all throws are five frames they all have the same uh same startup and same amount of active frames um i believe they all have the all normal throws have the same recovery too uh, they have different advantages and disadvantages on on hit on successful throw but this is five frames and has three active frames, right? Smug is plus eight. This throw, right? So so to calculate how to get a media attack on Oki, there's, there's a, uh, you need to know your frame advantage, right? So right here, Smug did dash forward after medium kick low punch low rush punch that leaves him at plus eight because his opponent back rows right so he has eight frames to do an action before shine can so he needs to hit an active hitbox he needs to have a move have a hitbox come out eight frames uh at the very least right so he needs to be at the first active frame at eight right so let so throw has five startup and three active, right? So it's five, six, seven, eight. Everything looks right, right? Like, oh, okay, this makes sense. It lines up. It doesn't. In Street Fighter, this is like non-obvious, right? In Street Fighter, the first active frame 
is the last startup frame. They're the same. So this move, so throw will go one, two, three, four, five, right? That, that fifth frame is the first active frame. So effectively, effectively, right? This will be, um, this will miss, right? Because hit the active frames of his throw will be over at seven, not eight, right? This, this should miss. So smug actually to an extent manually time this now maybe he just didn't maybe he did it on purpose maybe not right but he delayed this by one frame right if this was absolutely frame perfect if this was absolutely super duper frame perfect um that throw should miss right so he should be starting throw right now so we see boom 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 right so what is that three frames four frames five frames six look at how long he delayed that throw for this was not a true oki setup this was ma manually timed right if smug wanted to hit a true media attack right he wanted to hit something automatically timed for oki he would have chosen something with uh six frames six frames of startup and three active frames but he would also have to reach the opponent right so these are these are things to think about um another thing to think about is whether or not your opponent has access to an immediate reversal because remember it takes time for their moves to start up too so unless they can use an invincible move right generally the fastest move in the game is three frames so you can have an extra three frames to do something right so let's say Ibuki doesn't Ibuki doesn't have EX right here, right? She's getting up. Smug is plus eight, right? So he could use a move with eight frame startup. And as long as it has more than one active frame, it will hit meaty. Right? But he could also use a move with uh, an additional three frame startup and hit late. It will trade with her three frame attack when that comes out, right? So he'd be plus eight, and then Ibuki would go one, two, three for the jab. As long as he had an active frame before Ibuki's active frame, he would still he would still win. That's basically how you you're gonna go setting up. You're gonna do Oki setups, right? Um, that was a huge tangent to talk about the first three seconds of the match, but that's like really important, and especially if you don't know if like for so. I don't really know shit about Balrog. I'll be, I'll be the first one to tell you. We're sitting here doing this analysis. I don't know anything about Balrog, right? I know a little bit about Ibuki, but um, if if you don't know if something is, is gonna work or like, is that real? Should I be worried about defending this? Um, bring up the frame data and, and play the replay frame by frame and just, just do the addition of subtraction, all right? So we'll see, boom, this is a delayed throw. Forward throw. Now, what does Shine do? Okay, he quick rises with the buttons and down, 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 down. Just block. That's the, so here, right here, universally, you see a lot of people get away with this so when your opponent throws you you can only quick rise right but in the middle of the screen throws push pretty far away look at how far away they are right now so to continue to approach balrog would either need to do a rush punch or he would need to dash theoretically the dash is in a, is, is reactable um because the throw is not the throw is not plus enough for any character to dash up afterwards and be an advantage, right? So we know that Balrog's dash is 17. He's plus 16 here, which means if he dashes up, he should be minus one. So Shine could have theoretically reacted to that dash, pressed jab to get plus frames to keep Balrog from doing anything. But um, 
He chooses to sit still. It can be pretty hard to differentiate between a forward dash and a rush punch at like a quick enough reaction to actually get something good. So not, not the end of the world, but you see a lot of people do this on every character. And it's actually vulnerable to getting intercepted. Okay. Shine tries this again and it whiffs. I wonder if this will become very really significant. So he, he attempts to take his turn after after blocking Balrog's stand hard kick. Um, so the hard kick is minus three on block, which means that Balrog is three frames. He's whatever he does, no matter what, it's going to be three frames slower than the opponent. Shine can act three frames quicker. So he can't really punish him. He's not close enough to do a jab. Um, he can't like get a combo. He might not want to do something ultra super slow. So he just goes to touch the opponent. Um, I'm not sure why he chooses forward roundhouse. Maybe he wants to see if he can crush counter smug trying to steal his turn. Right, so minus three. It shines turn. He can take his turn. Balrog can't do anything about it. And he goes for a CC, which whiffs. Is that plus three? Am I tripping? I could be wrong. It oh, it is plus three. All right, the situation is reversed. I see you, Breezy. You got eyes. You got eyes. See, I don't know about Balrog. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're not off to a good start. So anyway, Shine is minus three, which means that Balrog can act three frames before he can. Right? So Shine attempts to steal his turn here with a crush counter move. But Smug frame traps him with the stand fears. Right? I think Smug is going to press this anyway because it's still his turn. Maybe this was a whiff punish. <laughs> uh-oh. Uh-oh. Happens to the best of them. Oh, this is a great anti -air. This is also a really smart decision. So, smug anti-airs with uh, medium punch, right? Now, he has a choice he can make here. Right? Ibuki is going to get reset in the air. This is why this is why you have the frame data next to you. Breezy is correct. This is why you have the frame data next to you. Right. So, Ibuki is going to get air reset, right? So, he's going to flip down. He, he can't do anything until he recovers. Smug, in, in the same way that you're going to have frame advantage when your opponent wakes up from getting knocked down, you have the same sort of situation with the air reset. Except now, Smug has the opportunity to attempt to ambiguously cross under or not, right? So, you can actually make it depending on where the opponent gets reset in the air, you can make it ambiguous as to what side you're going to get on. But Smug choosing intentionally to go to the other side is a very strong decision here because it gives him the corner position. Now his opponent is, is still very close to the corner, right? And having the corner is the best position you can be in. Okay. Plus one. Rush punch. It's plus one on block, EX. This means that Smug can act one frame before Ibuki can. A slight delay. Let me see like a little one frame, one frame delay here. Shine is just blocking. He ends up just walking backwards. Smug goes for stand hard kick again. Shine. Probably knows about as much as Balrog frame data as I do. Because <laughs> he gets fucking duffed. Right here. Ah. Big throw bait. The stun is huge. The reason the stun is so high is because he's getting counter hit. If he was just getting regular hit, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be that bad. But he's getting counter hit, so the stun is 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 increased. In in Street Fighter, 
Street Fighter Five. In Street Fighter Five, when you counter hit someone with a uh, normal type attack, right? Not a crush counter. When you counter hit someone with a normal attack, um, you get an additional two frames of frame advantage, right? So if you hit someone with a move and it's plus four on hit, if you counter hit them with that move, it will be plus six. Um, and I believe I could be wrong. I You get additional stun and you get additional damage, but I think it's 20% of the original. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on a lot of things. We're, quote me on the methods, not the results. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Balrog has this target combo. He has this medium kick, medium kick target combo. Um, this is minus on block. This is minus seven. This is a punish opportunity for Sean. He takes it. That's pretty good. Okay, ambiguous air reset. Or not really ambiguous, but opportunity for one. Right. Shine retreats. So so one of the one of the main things people say to look out for when you fight against Balrog or Boxer is the rush punch, right? The light rush punch in neutral. It's important. You want to stay close enough to where you can punish it, right? Because even though that move is minus on block, if you're far enough away, um, the pushback on his move and uh, the distance it can touch you at makes it really difficult to punish. So to, re to retreat here, hmm, what is Shine looking for to retreat here? Maybe to evade... Stand medium kick. Maybe he doesn't want to be in stand hard kick distance. Maybe he's set up a jump knife. Maybe non cross up jump knife. Ex. This is plus on block for Ibuki. All right. So she gets to she gets to move up and she has not she she can choose to throw or she can choose to go for a hit. What a back dash. Okay. Now. The, the thing here about this backdash is that if Shine if Shine doesn't frame perfect his attack, it's possible that the backdash will have already started up, right? So you see Shine here, he, he, he moves up. He moves up and he could do a little bit of a delay, right? A lot of people will do a little bit of a delay here. So if Smug backdashes, and Shine does any kind of delay. If Shine pressed a normal attack, he would interrupt the backdash after it already started, right? And and we can see looking at the hitboxes here. Um, a point during this backdash, Balrog becomes airborne, right? He should be airborne, um, which means that he'll get air reset if he gets hit. He'll do the flip just like if you anti-aired him, right? Uh, so when 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 does he become airborne? Just in the, in the middle of the backdash, right? This is for all backdashes in the game. In the middle in the middle of your backdash, this portion right here, right? You're airborne, which means you'll get air reset. So anyway, like I was saying, if, if Shine does a delay into a normal attack, he'll get air reset. He still has a lot of health. It's not like an air reset's gonna kill him. Not the biggest deal, right? If he gets air reset, he still kind of gets out of the situation, right? He gets too far away for, or he gets further away for Ibuki to continue her pressure on him. And if Shine goes for a throw, right? If Shine goes for a throw, he just evades the throw completely. All right, so the, the potential consequences on this backdash still you know pretty pretty in balrog's favor all right it's not like he's in the corner he still has move he still has room to move backwards if he didn't have room to move backwards it's possible he could have got punished for backdashing but here nothing uh 
uh, strategically, this is superior to teching, right? You might ask like, well, if he, if he wants to evade throw, why would he not tech, right? Because you could think, you could reason that, okay, well, if he does an immediate tech and Shine does a delay, um, he'll, he might throw him out of the move. And if Shine does an immediate throw, he'll tech the throw, right? That is, that is true, but teching in the middle of the screen presents a lot more danger than um, backdashing, right? Now, both of these could get crush countered, right? Both of these could get crush countered. So maybe Shine could have did like a hard kick right here. He could have did a down hard kick or something to try to CC. But I mean, that's, that, that's pretty unlikely, right? Let's think about this. Is, is the Ibuki player really gonna go for a CC off of the first throw bait? or first situation where tech could be an option. And if Shine baited a throw, if he did a shimmy, right? He did a walk back, teching would get you in a whole heap of trouble because then you'd get whiff punished for throwing. But if you backdash, right? If you backdash and Shine goes for a throw bait, well, now you're out of the situation because you've created distance between you, right? Um, generally every single option to defend against throw that isn't tech is superior in the middle of the screen because of uh if the opponent shimmies you usually get a, get away from it and um if you're confident they're going to throw you could you could just interrupt them right he wants pressure and control more than anything right now probably right so we gotta think like Okay, mix-up situation. We're close to the corner. The opponent's probably going to want to try to keep us in the corner. He might pursue us, right? So, Smug swings for a CC. Shine just hits him with the, the Visco. Corner position. Right? The, if, we're, if you're close to the corner, likelihood is your opponent's going to want to try to put you in the corner. Because the corner... Having the opponent in the corner is the strongest position you can get in the game, right? So right here, Shine is in the most empowered position he could have. Whoa. The Dark Unga. This is crazy. Jumping jab. I think Shine attempted... Here is a little bit of a scramble, like a flub. So... We see Shine, he gets the EX bar, right? He probably tries to do EX knife, right? Like he probably tries to do a very low EX knife. We see him retreat. He's done this before. He retreats a little bit, right? Yeah. He, yeah, that was definitely an EX knife. If we look at the inputs, we can see the quarter circle forward. It just so happens that Smug goes for the EX low, maybe to try to catch him retreating, who knows? Unique movement out of the corner. This makes Balrog's Rush Punch is plus. The V-Skill Charge. Another reason you want to stay close to Balrog is to prevent him from doing that. Okay, dash reaction. Another dash. Amazing whiff punish. This is the third time that's happened. Shine whiffs this. Boom, whiff punish all day. This is... Probably the best he could have got out of this situation. Corner position. Counter hit confirm. Okay, 50-50. This is not really a 50-50. There's several options here. So th this is going to air reset the opponent. Shine could choose meaty uh, normal attack. He can choose... Uh, left, right, he could choose throw, right? So the, the knife is going to come back around and protect Shine from whatever, whatever Balrog can do. Balrog doesn't have any EX reversals, right? So one of the, one of the, one of Balrog's weaknesses is that he doesn't really have any, any strong get off me moves outside of his super. He doesn't have any invincible moves. 
So Shine can choose left, right, meaty normal attack. He can go for throw. He can do an overhead and combo from the knife, right? So people say 50-50 like there's two options. There's, there's, there's several options here because he has high, low, throw, hit. Uh, yeah, he has high, low, high, low throw. The red bar of courage. Was this a reset? Okay. Goes for... This is mix-up number one. Right? It just works. But instead of confirming it, Shine goes for mix-up number two. The, the shuriken makes this safe. Right? Usually that command dash would be very punishable. But the fact that the shuriken comes over makes it safe. It combos too. That's actually really fortuitous. If this did not hit... If this medium punch was on block, he still would have been safe to teleport away. Okay, mix this up again. Stays in the front. This is a, a little bit of a suboptimal combo, right? Can she not? She's plus five after medium. I think Shine could have killed him right here, or at least dizzied him, right? So he goes. Stand medium kick, it hits to the front. That's plus five. Let's see what Ibuki can get from a plus five attack. So we're going to go to frame assistant tool and we're going to look. Is this, uh, is this a flub? Let's see. She could do stand medium punch. So instead of doing stand short, right? So the combo he goes for is he goes for standing medium kick, AKA stand forward. Then he goes into standing light kick, a.k.a. stand short, right? This is going to do less damage than if he had done um, stand medium kick, stand medium punch, a.k.a. stand stand forward, stand strong. He might have dizzied him. Okay, now he has to deal with another situation. Dash forward. What is this on knockdown? 30? Yeah, EX Kunai. What's up, Pandemoniums? I see you, man. What's good? And, you know, so in, in Street Fighter in Street Fighter 5 and um, actually, let me just say this for Street Fighter 5. This is true in older Street Fighter games, but just, just Street Fighter 5. When you do a combo on the opponent, after two hits, Every successive hit does less damage, right? There's scaling on your combo. So the more hits you do, the less damage each hit does, right? And it goes it goes by a, a percentage. I think it's like 20, 30, 40, something like that. Um, when you stun the opponent, the combo count stays active. So if I did a two hit combo to stun you, the scaling would be much less than if I did a five hit combo to stun you, right? So maybe you could say Shine goes, oh, I think the stun is close. I'm probably gonna stun him. Let me choose a small combo. That's a that's a decision that um, this caliber of player is definitely very much able to make, right? Just, now, it, it so happens that it just barely doesn't stun him, but it's possible that Shine was like, oh, I want to choose the short combo to make sure he dies. And unfortunately, it doesn't work out. Uh, gen the general advice is to always go for the optimal damage, right? A lot of people, there, there's like two, there's two camps. There's the keep it simple, stupid camp, right? There's the kiss camp. And then there's the always do the optimal thing all the time, no matter how difficult it is camp. Um, in Street Fighter V, the combos are kind of easy, but... If you have like tournament pressure, it can be uh, a little bit difficult, but there's there's no reason you shouldn't always do the optimal thing all the time. Stand medium punch would have been the same number of hits. This was just a flub. Probably, yeah, if the stand medium punch would have stunned him, right? He probably could have did stand medium punch and stunned him. Um, if he had done EX knife though, he would have had an additional hit, right? Uh, not that that would be all that significant because the combo... I mean, Smug doesn't have a lot of health left, right? 
but that we're just like theorizing talking about theoretically optimal stuff right here is a flub for sure unfortunate flub unforge okay so what is this on knockdown for balrog what do we do right here right what can we do as balrog so Ibuki gets to dash up wake up sweep <laughs> you do have the red bar of courage honestly i would say look for a v reversal but let's see what smug does yeah he does okay okay this is muy intelligente from sheen all right so we we know balrog's stun is high what's the best way to get your stun down when you have high stun in street fighter 5 it's the v reversal right ibuki has overhead she has tick throw um she has frame trap in this situation right so he could go for an overhead he could go for a tick throw he could go for a frame trap v reversal is going to beat two out of three of those options right v reversal is really enticing so shine instead of doing meaty down medium punch or uh you know any other move he chooses to do a move that recovers really quickly he goes for a low recovers really quickly he's able to reactively do this this is this this will be a reactable situation right you'd have to be hyper ready for it but it is entirely possible that he reacted to this with throw um furthermore tick throw off of down light down light kick for ibuki is a thing so this this covers both bases possibly another flub so here the stun goes down no matter what right but if you back throw the opponent if you back throw the opponent you do way more stun you do way more damage way more stun second v reversal i think is still a smart decision there are many instances where the opponent can reactively v reversal you right and those include moves with high amounts of recovery, right? So there are a lot of moves that are guaranteed V reversal on block. If you take your favorite two characters into training mode, you'll be able to find like, oh, if I block this move, the opponent cannot contest my V reversal. Then there's uh, situations where the opponent can react to V reversal. That's even if, if they're extremely plus or if they have a move with really quick recovery right this knife if he v reversaled after the knife explosion ibuki would be plus enough to throw him again but he v reversals the first hit hmm. reversal is really good but it's also baitable In Street Fighter V, there are no options you can choose that don't have a direct counter, right? And, I mean, generally in Street Fighter in general, everything you do has some sort of associated risk. What's important is the context in which you do it, right? Um, it's like a general thing. So, like, this, th that fact helps explain why people are like, oh, just do it if it works. Do it till it stops working, right? What they what they that, what they really mean when people say oh just do it till it works what they really mean is they mean look at how the opponent responds to the situation and if they're incapable or they do not demonstrate that they have a response that puts you at a disadvantage when you do something keep doing that because literally anything you do is like that everything you do ha can have a response that beats it Right, so like right here, starting out 99 second EX rush punch, this is vulnerable to neutral jump. Like he could get neutral jump to have a whole combo, but Shine's not doing anything about it, right? So we, we neutral jump. Same thing with uh, pressing buttons. If they can't respond to a bad option, you're here to win, right? Same thing. Now, how am I gonna phrase this? 
Here's another thing to consider. I, I'm going to use a metaphor to describe this one, right? I'm going to use a metaphor to describe this one. If you run through a red light and you don't get hit by another car, if you if you're driving, you run a red light and you don't get hit by another car, was it a good idea? All right. So in, in Street Fighter, part of being a skillful player is identifying when you're running through a red light or not. Right. <laughs> so here, let's say, for example, Smug goes for a hard kick. Uh, I mean, uh, Smug, Smug just keep, let's just theorize. Let's just say Smug keeps doing this every time, every time. EX rush 99 seconds. Right. If Shine's not dealing with it, all right. But is Shine capable of dealing with it? Right. Say these players have never played before. Part of this match would be sussing out whether the opponent ha cannot deal with something or if they're just choosing not to. And I know that sounds like really, but it's enti it's entirely possible to tell your opponent's skill level based on like every action they take in a match like surrounding actions um not related to one specific situation can help you figure out what they would do in that situation so of course everything is unsafe and the optimal solution that like the optimal action depends on the context but you also need to consider whether or not you're running through a red light because if you run i can tell you this is a fact if you run through a red light and you don't get hit by another car it was still a dumb fucking idea right x see smug is smug reacting to this this is the fourth time we've seen we've seen this right i, I would suppose if smug tries to do a a hard kick or something he would get crush countered right yeah what's up low and i see you man what is good smug is as close as he can get to right so after this he sits in in in, in street fighter when you crouch you see the green box surrounding them right then there's a whole nother dimension of choosing the right time to let people get away with running red lights Neutral jumping EX rush punch beats that obviously, but the counter, but the correct counter loses to dash upper. That yeah, 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 yeah. Right. There's no action you can you can counter his counter, right? So theoretically, if you saw an opponent responding to a move in a certain way, you can keep doing it to thusly encourage that response and save it for later. That's something you would see players do if they were playing like a first to ten. Or like uh, first to seven, or or something like I mean a uh, best of ten, best of seven, or whatever, or first to ten, first to seven, you would see them do things like that, right? Um, a prime example that you see really often, not so much anymore because, well, you you still see it very often is is when someone throws a projectile and the opponent neutral jumps. Generally, almost every projectile character can punish a neutral jump from like full screen. But you'll see people, especially high level players, let the opponent neutral jump over the projectile several times to get them comfortable doing it. And then later in the match, they'll start abusing that. Um, that also gives what Pandemonium is talking about. Doing that also gives you time to observe more fine detail about the response, right? So ideally you want to replicate a situation exactly you want the most specific stimulus you want the most specific set of information to give to your opponent so you can see how they react to it right and you want to do that a couple times to see if you can identify a pattern so oh this guy always if i'm always 99 second rush punching he started 99 second jumping right um, you just recreate that. So if you wanted to see if you could get him to jump at 99 seconds, neutral jump, you wouldn't wait till 97 seconds to rush punch. You would, you try to do the same exact thing again to encourage the opponent to do what you could potentially abuse later. Anyway, it's in street fighter five. When you crouch, 
You see this green box around the characters, right? This is the hurt box, right? This is the hurt box. This, if this box overlaps with a red box, right? The red boxes are hit boxes. If this box overlaps with a red box, right? Your opponent, you, you will get hit, right? You'll get touched. If you're blocking, you'll get put in block stun. If you get hit, you'll get hit and you'll get put in hit stun. It's true. This is when you crouch, it gets wider, right? So this is as fat as Balrog can get. So this is like just tough spacing, right? Um, anyway, because of hitboxes and hurtboxes, moves can look deceptive. Smug takes a step back here. He takes almost an imperceptible step back. Look at this. You see this? This might be specifically to make this whiff. We can, we saw Shine do this three other times, right? This is the fourth time after blocking the follow-up move to a rush punch at this spacing. He, he goes for a forward hard kick. Sweep. I wonder why he chooses sweep instead of down medium. He might just be reacting to it. But then if he's reacting to it, why not choose down medium? Crush counter city. Crush counter city again. Just trying to do back dashes. Back dashes put you in a crush counter state. Ibuki is might be Ibuki is airborne. He's he's whiff punished this with a down medium punch before in the in the previous round he did it. So I, I wonder. He did down medium punch into rush punch. Here he chooses to sweep. Excuse me. Crush counters are funny for new players. Um. Crush counters have a super deep effect on this game. Like a very, very, very deep effect. So if we look at, look at, uh, let's wait for another interaction here. Okay. Yeah. Look at the shape. Let's see if somebody whiffs something. Look at this move, right? You see how this move... Uh, wait, let's wait for something to whiff. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Here we go. Look at this Ibuki down medium kick. Okay. You see the, the shape of this move, right? You got a, you got a hurt box here. You got a, a hurt box here, and then you have the hit box, right? Now, if you want to whiff punish this move, right? If you want to punish the opponent for whiffing this move, right? You got to you gotta put a red box somewhere right around here. I mean, there are a lot of moves that Balrog could use to put a red box right here. Maybe even crouching jab or crouching light kick, right? But in Street Fighter V, in Street Fighter V, there's a, a, a priority system of normals, right? So if you trade, right? If you hit an opponent at the same time they hit you, you overlap hit boxes and hurt boxes. If you trade, a medium attack will always be a light attack and a heavy attack will always be a medium attack, right? So if you were attempting to poke counter or counter poke the opponent, right? With uh, a move that would hit down here, right? Um, you, you can't use a light normal because the medium will always just win. I mean, you could, 
but it be it makes it more difficult because you have to have exact exact timing and that's fairly difficult to do right generally you're just kind of like oh, i think he's going to press it now so you press your button bef a little bit before right you need exacting timing um to interrupt somebody with a uh, a move of lower priority so this priority system makes it difficult to use moves of low low priority because if you accidentally trade with the opponent you just you lose they just win right um combine this with the way that they design the frame data around crush counters right you get a situation where you can kind of just swing crush counter moves and if they hit you get a super high reward but the opponent is generally not able to easily whiff punish your crush counter move of course there are moves you can whiff punish and you can whip like easily whiff punish that are crush counters and you can always wish whiff punish every move if you have absolutely perfect spacing and absolutely perfect reactions and timing right but in street fighter 5 crush counters are like the name of the game you see a lot of people just swing crush counters like you've ever seen a urian player just go hur, 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 credit card swipe right um or a rashid player do do fierce or a zeku player do down fierce over and over again right so like Crush, crush counters have a really deep effect. It, it basically makes it so that using low strength moves in neutral is like more difficult than like previous installments of Street Fighter. At least I would say. So I think for new for like newer players. Crush counters might be really enticing because you just swing them, swing them, swing them, swing them. But I can see how they can make it hard for you to do like a combo, right? As like a very new player. Like if I just picked up the game, counter comboing off a of CC might be a bit difficult. <laughs> Unfortunate combo drop. Another flub. I see Shine flubbing a lot here. Maybe he thought he would get EX. Let's look at the inputs. Oh, yeah, he attempts to do EX, but he's a little bit short on meter. We can see he does light punch, medium punch, but his meter is too low for EX. Right here, um, this air reset, throw after air reset is a really common option for people to go to right so this is this is pretty potent because it abuses the fact that your opponent knows about air reset situations right here you could go 50 50 either side right you could try to go for a cross up or you could go for a low or like a bait right so the opponent here is probably going to try to block like okay if, if i try if they try to block a cross up and if they try to block a meaty, I can throw them. So a lot of times you can catch people in this situation blocking, right? Like the, the this situation most encourages the opponent to try to block, like get ready for a cross under. They're ready to react for like a cross under. They're thinking about blocking, right? Most common thing people do in this situation is go for a left or a right. You can go for the throw. Because this throw puts Shine in the corner, the pushback, the distance between the opponents is much less. This gives Smug the opportunity to go for Oki. It gives him the opportunity to continue his pressure. Um, whereas he, he normally wouldn't, right? In the, in the middle of the screen, when your opponent throws you, you get tossed away and maybe they can follow up with one move and likelihood is that that move is gonna be minus. So then the pressure is over, right? And if they try to dash up to you or use like some sort of mobility option to get close to you, um, usually that's interruptible, right? Because the throw is not plus enough for a character to dash forward or like command dash or jump or something like that. But in the corner, because you stay closer, it, uh, it doesn't matter so much. So a lot of characters get better pressure off of throws in the corner. Um, 
generally the only time you want to tick uh tech a throw right like the only time teching a throw would be uh strategically optimal is if you're gonna get cornered by the throw or if you are in the corner in the middle of the screen teching a throw is definitely not something you want to do knife here Smug has done this before. He waits, 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 and then he surprised EX low. This is now plus. Normally, this this rush punch would be minus, but because he charged up his V skill too, it's plus. If your opponent does not have a fireball, this is probably the better V V skill to use. As Bala. Ugh. Okay. This is what we were talking about earlier. Let me move the camera. So, if you backdash and you have space behind you, um, you get out of this type of situation. But Smug backdashes into the corner and he can't go anywhere, right? So look at this. Shine goes for the throw. Smug backdashes it. Then Shine just immediately punishes him on reaction. Right, he's just like, all right, all right, I'm just going to go there. Smug might have been able to block here. I think Shine was a little, maybe a little bit slow on this. A little bit slow on this. Let's see. Yeah, that throw was not meaty. The throw was not meaty. So he doesn't actually have time to truly truly punished but if this was a meaty throw he would have a, he would actually have time to punish this that's interesting is that a counter hit it is okay okay 50 50 time front or the back he continues to the front um the shuriken will follow you smug attempts to get out with the ex rush punch uh, that's tough how could shine convert off that Maybe it's not even possible. He probably, I don't know, maybe he could do slide. <laughs> Forward throw. He's hunting the stun. Smart V reversal. Surprise EX. Skedaddle, skadoodle. I know, control neutral. In that situation where Ibuki throws the shuriken, if you can make it difficult for her to follow up, um, you might be able to get yourself out of the pressure by paying some health, right? So, like, right there, he does the EX Rush Punch. That, that kind of gets him out of the situation, right? He has health to spare, too. So, it's not like, uh, it wouldn't be the end of the world if he took the Shuriken right there. That, that, that EX Rush Punch is a pretty smart idea. Okay, this is game two. What a dash. What a dash. He's letting Balrog... Is he letting him back up? Not really. You see how Shine approaches and crouches? Approach, crouch, approach, crouch. Um, this is to defend against rush punch, light rush punch. Right? At any point in time, if, if Rog has charge, he can execute a light rush punch and clip you for walking forward especially if it's spaced out right if he hits you with, with at the tip of right light rush punch is is very very difficult to punish almost unpunishable for a lot of characters in a lot of situations um so smug abuses that fact right he goes oh i'm playing a charge character you're looking for when i have charge right smug knows that shine is looking for him to have charge in this situation, Smug does have charge. He's holding back, right? He's, he, he could have charge right here. It's kind of tight, but right here, he could have charge. Right? He could be charging up. So Shine crouches, right? He's waiting to block, and then he goes, Okay, the rush punch didn't come. We're at the tip of the rush punch. I'm going to retreat so that the rush punch will now whiff, right? 
but Smug goes, oh, I see you. You're looking for me to charge, so I'm going to dash forward, right? You're looking for that charge. You're waiting for the rush punch. Haha, -ha, surprise dash. Um, we can see... We can see Shine execute a what I what I what what I see often to be a bad habit of players. I do this. Everybody does this. When someone dashes at you, do not hit throw. Never, ever, ever hit throw. <laughs> Don't do that. Right? Why do you not want to hit throw? So, firstly, if someone dashes at you, and you, you check their dash or you interrupt their follow-up attack, right? Let's just say your your action comes out first. Throw is suboptimal. You might as well just press light punch, right? If you press light punch, it's, fast, it's faster than throw, right? Almost every single character has a light punch that's faster than, than throw, right? You press your light punch, it's four or five frames. You can combo off of two jabs in some way with most characters. You can jab, 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 stand short or jab, jab, stand short, jab, jab, special, right? And if you interrupt them, you have the chance to react to a counter hit combo, right? If you fail to interrupt them, of course, you're gonna get counter hit out of whatever you're trying to do, right? But if you throw, you take the same risk, but you give up the potential reward of the combo. Right. Don't want to throw. This is this is a recipe for just getting getting suboped. You see a lot of players do this. The more replays you watch, the more people you see do this. Someone dashes at them, they hit throw. Okay. Did you try to V skill here? Yeah, he gets interrupted for V-skilling. This is we see this again. Is does Smug after this down medium kick, does he take a little tiny walk back? Uh he stays standing. Oh, that's very So previously, right? Previously we saw that after down medium kick on hit or block right smug takes a little tiny step back and then he'll crouch and shine has consistently pressed forward hard kick in that situation right smug takes that step back and then crouches probably intentionally to make that hard kick whiff or whatever follow-up whiff right but this time this time we can see some awareness some high level gameplay awareness right he watches shine follow him he watches him follow him right and guess what he doesn't do he doesn't crouch right the reason that he doesn't crouch is because he now knows either very either consciously or subconsciously he now knows that if he crouches this move will touch him so he just stands up and lets it whiff then he goes for his whiff punish. This is actually super high level right here. This little interaction. This is like elite spacing. All right. We've seen this pattern before. Walk back. And then he crouch. Shine attempts to counter by walking forward. Shine goes, damn, my hard kicks are missing. I'm going to move forward before I do it. But then Smug goes, oh, I see. I see that you're countering. I'm going to counter your counter by standing up. Because like we like like I pointed out earlier, like we were talking about earlier, when you crouch, you're fatter. Right? Yeah, this is this is spacing. This is the shit that you don't see in Street Fighter V. Um, this whiff punish, I don't know about, I mean, alright, so this is really good, but it's still possible that he could have maybe got down medium punch. Or maybe even down medium kick target combo, I don't know. But this is excellent spacing. This is extremely high level. Uh, I'd be interested to... It would be so interesting just to hear players' commentary over their match as they were playing it, like what they were thinking. I wonder if this was a conscious reaction or just like a subconscious adjustment. 
right? How did he know not to crouch here? Right? I mean, obviously the cue is that Ibuki walks forward, which means that if he did crouch, he'd get hit. So he stays standing, which makes a move with. In neutral, it is pretty much very important that you, you try to stand up as much as possible. Because that allows you to be as skinny as possible, which lets you make as many moves with as you can. Extremely high level gameplay. That was such excellent spacing. I don't know about the whiff punish though. This could have been a combination, right? At least a down medium to a rush punch. Push back here. So like we learned earlier, like I like I learned earlier, um, this is fucking plus three on block. Balrog's hard kick is actually plus three on block. So to press a button here is a bold move. But we can see Ibuki's V skill pulls her back, right? If Shine had pressed any other button here, he would have got crush countered by this follow-up attack. This is uh, using Ibuki's V skill really, really well. Proper, proper use of V skill one, because it fades her away, right? Oh, crush counters. With this crush counter, let's see. Down medium. Down medium. Walk back. Crush counter. This is down fierce, right? Maybe this is intentional. Maybe he's like, oh, he's gonna hard kick. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and CC the hard kick. Because this wouldn't hit anything. Right? This would I mean this wouldn't even touch a bookie. Right, he does that little walk back and then immediately hard kick. Or I mean hard punch. Maybe he's looking for that forward roundhouse from Ibuki. Okay, plus frames, plus frames, minus frames. Plus on block. Plus on block, plus two. Into plus three. All right, frame trap. Pretty wide frame traps, but I mean, what is Ibuki going to do at this distance? Anything Ibuki could do at this distance would get interrupted. EX. Are we going to see down medium kick? Okay, walk back, right? Slight walk back? No, just immediate button. Oh, it develops. It develops. He went for it again. He was not dissuaded. He was fairly confident. Like, okay, I see that he reacts to after my medium kick. He goes for his forward roundhouse. If I walk back, he now started walking forward. All right. So Smug goes for the counter right away. We saw him try this earlier, but Shine didn't do anything. He didn't give up. That there, that's what we saw, right? He's this is Okay, after down medium kick, Shine has consistently responded with forward forward hard kick. Smug goes for the immediate counter. Right? So, all right. It wasn't soon enough. He walked forward and then crouched, right? It wasn't it wasn't soon enough. So, now in this next situation, in this next situation goes uh, Smug goes, "Okay, down medium kick. I'm going to hit this immediately. If you choose to walk forward, or if you choose to do forward roundhouse, you'll get hit out of it, right? Likelihood is you'll get hit out of it, right? This is a smart decision because Shine does the walk forward roundhouse intentionally trying to compensate for how Smug was walking back before, but Smug is already ahead of him in the mix up, so to speak. He's already ahead of him and he punishes him for it. I know it sounds weird to say punish for something that was preemptive, but this is such an excellent read, right? This this really punishes Shine for uh, trying to take this action strategically, not so much for doing something unsafe. It's unfortunate he doesn't get... I think this... Did he attempt to do down fierce here? Let's see. No, that's just straight up back fierce. He's walking back, he pressed fierce. I wonder what the follow-up is here. I don't know if Balrog has one. This would have decent pushback at that range, I guess. And it is a crush counter normal. 
it also will reach right the thing here is it will reach this will reach let's look at how fast this fierce is what is balrog standing hard punch uh this is ibuki let's look at balrog is 12 hmm. what's this standing hard kick nine perhaps it would have been a superior option to choose hard kick because he can combo off of it Either way, this is an excellent, excellent situational awareness. Tick throw. Okay. This is fake, right? You cannot dash forward after throw, but it's a very hard, hard very hard to react to. Boom. Okay. Right. Plus two. Now. The likelihood that Shine is going to view reversal is probably really low in this situation. Um, if we're Balrog, right, let's think. Let's think here. Okay, so we, we kind of smushed our opponent in the last round. The most damage our opponent got on us was going for the, uh, going for the V-Trigger activation, right? And we know a Boogie's V-Trigger activation is really, really good. He doesn't really have enough health to get another one by taking damage. And it's somewhat unlikely that he's going to do enough V skills to get another V trigger, right? His health is really low. So the interactions were the amount of interactions we're going to have is not going to facilitate him getting another V trigger. It's probably likely that he's going to activate. So we could get away with maybe doing some pressure that would be V reversalable, right? We're not we're not worried about him V reversaling here because is probably pretty pretty low on the totem pole for him to choose that as an option oh wow that's wild so rog is plus two on hit here after getting hit shine chooses to do a, a light attack unfortunate this is three frames i believe so smug goes to do a frame trap here right he's plus two he goes for stand medium uh it's just a little bit too slow oh unfortunate combo drop that's why you don't tech that is why you do not tech Okay. Rush punch. This is that. This is this is that rush punch on the tip. We haven't seen it yet. Um. But this is hard to punish. This is really hard to for Ibuki to punish. Right. What is she gonna do? Maybe a immediate stand jab buffer into something. But at this distance, is 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 pretty difficult to punish. He goes for a turnaround punch. This is a negative edge move. Tap, turnaround punch. Um, sometimes you'll hear people refer to these moves as zonk moves. Uh, the way you do this is you hold down a button and you release it. So he just lets go of a punch button right here and it gives him Balrog's turnaround punch move. Uh, the longer Balrog holds the button down, uh, the more powerful his turnaround punch is. It has like increased uh, superior properties. Okay. Ugh, hard kick. Charge up. Rush punch is not plus. Plus, plus, plus. Activation. V trigger two for Balrog is the command grab, if I'm not mistaken, right? Now, Balrog's command grab does not give him a lot of damage, but it gives you pretty high stun and semi-decent positioning he can also combo into it so it makes uh it makes his whip punishing without charge a little bit better he goes for it here but he's just a little bit too far away okazeme backdash we see smug backdashing a lot backdash when you're not about to get cornered is not bad but this is i mean it works out he still has some room to walk back Knife plus 
What a wild jab. What a wild jab. So you s this explosion is plus double digits. All right. And he goes for a standing light kick here. This is Balrog's fastest move. Maybe if Shine dashed, he might have been able to interrupt it. I don't know. That's a very bold, bold attack. I mean, he has the red bar of courage. So if, if that did hit him, he would have been able to go into command grab, but still. What a wild jab. Again, we see it. We see that. Well, it's not a jab. It's a short. We see it again right here. He's he's ready to interrupt. The red bar of courage has has gotten to his skull. He he had not ever done this before. But because he has access to that new move, he has access to the command grab. He's going for these interrupts. More often than not, Smug has chosen to retreat or just block. What a crazy the red bar of courage, truly. Again, again, he's looking for it. I have my V-Trigger on. I want to use my V-Trigger. Okay. Oh, unfortunate. Scrambly. Scrambly, scrambly, scrambly. Smug really kind of got himself in the hot water right there. It seemed like he started focusing on using his V-Bar more than he focused on doing all the other things he was doing that were winning. All right. So far, it doesn't seem like Smug really needs his V-Trigger to win this. Like, at all. Here? What does he do? Does he try to backdash? Let's see. Uh, He tries to... Ah, he just doesn't crouch low. He just doesn't block fast enough. Again, we can see this. Regardless of whether or not... Regardless of whether or not you can quick rise or you can back rise, you always want to either do two punches or two kicks because mashing the inputs can get you into trouble. You see a lot of players do this, even the best players in the world. They just they just mash inputs. What did he do here? Uh, he attempts to anti-air, but Ibuki goes for an immediate knife. Now, I, if I'm not mistaken, this knife would be minus. I could be wrong. So his anti-air gets stuffed. Dizzy City. Optimal. Right? So you have some options. You have some options here. When you stun the opponent, you can build meter or you could get uh, knives as Ibuki, right? So Shine chooses knife. 50-50 uh, to the front again. Schmix. Optimal combo. Optimal combo is the one that kills him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Slurping up the coffee. seems like the faster paced the games are, right? Like the more Smug tries to contest, the more damage he's taking. So it might behoove Shine to try and press the issue, be more active. So far, Shine has been pretty reactive, pretty much pretty defensive. We can see him switching it up right here. Look at how much more active he is. That last game, he was so much more active. And now he's continuing to do it. 
Looks like he's caught on. With punishing. We see it again. Smug hits this medium kick. Smug touches with this medium kick. And then he retreats. Look at this. He does this. He does this on hit or block. He's done this consistently every time that he's touched with this move. Shine, instead of choosing to do forward hard kick now, he just pops a squat. Surprise EX. Here, probably going for a crouch short would be a superior option because if the opponent attempts to evade throw, the crouch short will catch them. If they stay still, the crouch short should give you frame advantage. And after crouch short, you still have micro walk throw as a threat. I feel like uh, strategically, this is a little bit of a suboptimal response to the rush punch. Maybe Balrog is too far away for a short. Who knows? He does a pretty far walk, too. He does a pretty far walk. Hmm. At the very least, performing cross short establishes a mix-up, right? Encourages the opponent to sit still, which then enables you to throw them. This is just rough, unfortunately. Ooh, whiff punish. Excellent whiff punishes from Smug. Look at that. This is why you want to stay close to Balrog. This is this harassment, this pestering with rush punches, makes it so hard to walk forward. It is so hard because at any time he has that charge, he can just surprise. This is why it's very important to stay closer to him. There's that medium kick back up again. This might be a really good position for Balrog. I'm not sure. The pushback on this move into retreat. Okay. This is what I was talking about with throw. I think I think he I think Shine just missed this. Let's see. Mm. No, it's just a little. It's just slow. Just doesn't work. If you get thrown in the middle of the screen, it's not really a big deal. Because even if Shine touched Smug with this, even if Smug sat still and was ready to react to Dash, um, this will be negative on block. So uh, Smug will be able to take his turn. Oh, excellent. That was really good. Counter hit combo right there? Is that a counter hit only combo? No, that's a jab. No way that's a counter combo. Still a good combo. He could have done target combo, maybe? I'm not sure how Balrog's target combo works. He maybe could have done medium kick, medium kick confirm. Probably what happened in the in the mind of the player is he hit this, right? This hits, and then right about now, he's probably like, oh shit, I hit him. So then he chooses to do jab, which is fast. And then he buffers his jab. Being ready for confirming hits is a lot more about anticipation than it is about reactions. A lot of people will assume that like, oh, these players are just super fast. They're reacting to everything. In actuality, they're mentally preparing for the situation. They're like, okay, if it hits, I'm ready to do this. And they're ignoring some other options, right? So that they're they're focusing on 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 doing a set amount of things and then everything else they're not really worrying about. That's why you can see like really extremely high level players get jumped at. Like you see them not anti air, easy to AA jumps, right? Um, it's because their focus is elsewhere. Confirming hits is 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 a lot a lot about um, anticipation. Uh, we see we see shine going for a hit here he defends the x low and instead of going for a grab he goes for frame advantage
If you were a Buki, maybe starting with sh starting with crouching short would be better to deal with this. Hard to say. I don't. I don't really play either of these characters. Frame advantage. Frame advantage. Frame disadvantage. Ex. This is a mix. He chooses not to retreat. Instead, he goes for the ex. I suppose this would punish moving forward. Gets the block. He gets plus frames here, though. Right? This is plus one. EX Rush Punch is plus one on block. He goes in for a throw. This, this is probably a throw attempt. Shine reacts to walking forward. Right? They walk forward for a long time here. Or they walk together for a long time here. Oh, then he tries to check the throw. Okay. No schmifty schmifty right there, huh? Punishable. Punishable because it's close. Activation station. There's a 50-50 here now. So after this lands... Frame trap. Low. Or throw. He goes for the low option. Excellent dash check. This is good. Excellent. No, this is not a dash check. This is late. Still good. Still good. Still a good idea. Right? He dashes. You hit a button and interrupt them. Dashing is not safe. Dashing and jumping generally in the same camp of stratagems. Right? You give up blocking and control of your character for a moment for a potentially really big reward the reward for dashing is uh pretty much it's pretty much almost the same you get really close to them and then you could do a normal but the risk is much higher because you can take a full grounded combo if you jump uh it's a little bit easier for them to interrupt because it's faster but you get double digits plus frames after hitting them with a jump normal or touching them with a jump normal, right? You want to treat dashing and jumping the same. You, you just have to interrupt them. You have to check check them, right? Okay. No, no V trigger. Maybe another flub. This definitely looks like he attempted to V trigger activate. No activation station there either. I'm sure again. Okay. He only needs one touch. Oh, much more conservative now. Ah. Uh oh. Okay, command grab. He just wants to knock down. He wants to knock down. I don't know about this V reversal. He's not in range to get chipped. There's his health is so high. He has the health advantage of 27 seconds left. If he blocked one or two more attacks, he may have had a second V trigger. It's hard to say. If he did okay, maybe if he did. Yeah, if he blocked maybe one or two more mediums, he would have gotten V-Trigger again. Then he could have maybe gone for an instant overhead mix-up. I'm not sure about this V-Reversal. I feel like this... Does this give the round away? I feel like that V-Reversal was an extremely poor decision. Oh, no way. He goes for a punish, but he's too far. This move is really hard to punish. Maybe he misses the reversal window. It doesn't say reversal. He might have missed it. Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks like he missed the reversal one, and he just gets supered, right? Yep. I think V reversaling. I'm 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 very confident that V reversaling right there was not the play, right? Because you blocked the rush punch. Um, maybe if he had done EX, maybe if he did an EX rush punch, maybe. But V reversaling the regular rush punch, I don't know. All right. Hmm. So so far, Smug has had ex immaculate spacing, um, and Shine has made a few. Just a, it seems like almost a, like an off off match, right? You expect a player of this caliber to like really land all the optimal combos, really, you know, have pretty tight decision making. But it seems like it's just just a little bit not enough. Just everything's a little bit suboptimal. And it's, it's causing some problems. Oh, another flub. Unforge. Unforge. That's huge damage. This is That damage is really significant. Right? Because Shine has a, a hell of a trouble getting in. He does. Now, now think about this, right? Think about this. Okay, so you're a Buki, right? You, just pretend you're a Buki. Okay, this Balrog player is doing a really good job of pestering me, and he's whiff punishing my attacks really well. However, I get more damage when I'm active. I need to take the initiative away from him, right? I'm not having a good time trying to, like, beat him in the middle of the screen. I need to be more active, get on top of him. That game I won is because I rushed him down, right? So now, you're in the last match. If you lose this match, you're out of the tournament. It doesn't seem like it doesn't seem as enticing an idea to try to go a little unga bung. It doesn't seem like oh, I want to risk dashing at him. I want to risk, you know, throwing out a normal. You don't want to risk it, right? Because now, if you lose, you lose. You have no games behind you. So, yeah, it does seem a a lot more encouraging to play more conservative, right? And, and Shine naturally is already a more conservative of a player than Smug is. But that's not the that's not gonna be the winning strat right now. So I, I'm I'm I would predict that Shine is way less active in this match than previous matches. And Smug continues to just like bully bully him in the middle of the screen um if shine is really active i'd be super surprised yo i see you thanks for the subscription man big two months with our powers combined we are paying my rent what's up bmac i see you man i'd be i'd be really surprised if he's more active because it, it, it's more risky now than it ever was before and I mean, Smug right now can go as Smug can just kind of almost do whatever he wants, right? And the, the reason that is is because he's on match point, right? He ha Shine has to win so many games. He has to win so many games. So Smug can play a lot more risky. He can mix it up. He can mix up his strategies. So he could go, oh, well, you thought I was trying to whiff punish you, carefully space my rush punches. You thought I was only going to follow up my 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 pressure with like these certain types of staggers right stagger hard kick uh hard punch you know like tap wait move tap right that's staggered pressure uh he just be like psych i'm going nuts and he he, he really could get away with it he, he really could take that risk look at shine where are the normals look at almost no normals so far Almost no normals. Okay, so flub combo, right? Where are the normals? Okay, the red bar of courage. Look at this. So conservative. Absolutely, he's, he's letting Smug go first, right? In, in this situation, both players are not really at an extreme advantage or extreme disadvantage. Um, 
let's ignore the health totals right now. Ignore the health bar, ignore the resources. At this spacing, right? Like, you know, round start-ish spacing, neither player can really touch each other. Of course, you know, there are some options that you could potentially do that are superior, like Balrog has the rush punch, Ibuki has the knife, right? Um, but neither player is really at extreme advantage or disadvantage. In this situation, it's about who takes the initiative, right? Who is going to act first, right? And to act first is to essentially take on some amount of risk, right? Because you could you could have shitty timing. You could be like, okay, I'm gonna move, and then the opponent goes, oh, I'm gonna fucking full screen sweep, or or I'm gonna surprise low attack, or or, or throw a button out, or something like that, right? Um, and shine right here he's it, it looks like he's clammed up he's just not going first right he's, he's afraid to take the initiative because his back this is the last game if he loses this he loses right so he's like all right i'm not gonna make any mistakes but being so concerned about not making any oh no, that that's an assumption i'm making right but based on the way he's playing it seems as if he's concerned about not making mistakes right that is the actual mistake strategically that's the mistake he made right here right he was most winningest when he took the initiative away from smug because smug was really really willing to contest at almost any moment during the match that shine won smug was trying to contest him and shine was just like counter hit counter hit set up i'm on top of you again oh counter hit counter hit. oh i got hit it's okay red bar of courage hold this 50 50 right um but now, he's playing into Smug's hand. Smug has shown that he's extremely comfortable and competent at being mid-screen, being far away, playing this. Oh, you're going to wait it out? Cool. All right. I'm just going to, you know, tap you with normals, back away, tap you again. He's like, oh. And when you're, when you're afraid of rush punch, right? When you're, when you're, when you're popping a squat, when you're afraid of rush punch, when you're afraid of my stand... Stand roundhouse or stand fierce. I'm gonna surprise dash. Right, that's the mix-up in neutral right here. He's chilling. Okay, shine is a little bit more active, but still. Look at this. He's so, he's. This is a dash check, but right here. So much blocking. Okay, this is Chansu. Chansu, fifty-fifty. Almost all of Shine's mix-ups have hit Smug. Anytime Shine has had a mix-up, he's hit him. That's why being more active and taking the initiative has been working, right? Shine is going... I mean, Smug is attempting to contest. Shine is doing mix-ups that are hitting Smug. And uh, Smug is playing into it, right? Uh-oh. Back throw. A bold move. Okay, what is this on block? Let's find out some Balrog matchup knowledge. Activation, usually activations are plus. Is this minus two? I have no idea what that is on block. I would, I would, I would guess that this is minus two. Uh, good attempt to air to air. We've seen Shine do this once before where he uses the unique movement to get out of the corner. Right here, it's really hard for Balrog to chase down because he can't... Yeah, they nerfed it. Okay. He can't... Um, he can't... He, he loses charge, right? So to access his forward-reaching specials, he needs to have been holding away from the opponent for a certain amount of time. Uh, we, we see a little bit of a late reaction here. But this is generally the this is generally a good idea, right? Um, another thing you can do is you can follow her, right? So he could have walked up. He could have tried to walk up and follow her, but it's, this is just a difficult anti-air. Oh, the red bar of courage. He has chance to. He tried it. He tried to activate right here, right? Shine sees Smug walk forward. He goes for down medium kick, activate. 
Look at that. Down medium kick right there. But he falls into the command grab. The tick throw. That was, to be fair, that was a really long tick throw. Is he at, is it, I wonder about the psychology of the player. At this point, is he like, okay, if I'm more active, I do more damage? Or is he just like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm just going to try something. All right. Okay. That was a good interrupt. This is probably a reactionary interrupt. Look at how long Smug walks forward. You see this? Excellent interrupt. Oki. Okay, nothing. EX knife. When Ibu... This is uh, anti-Ibuki stuff, right? When you see Ibuki jump and she has access to EX bar, generally, it's more rewarding to jump with her. Right? If you see her jump and she throws this knife, if you jump forward at her, right, you will avoid the knife and you can punish her recovery on the way down. So you can hit her with the whole grounded combo. Oh. Here Smug jumps backwards to avoid the knife. But uh I mean that's 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 an okay situation. It's, you lose some space, but you you don't have to hold the mix up. Right. It's fairly difficult for a Buki. I mean, if you jumped super duper ultra late, maybe a Buki might be able to anti air you with something, but it's it's almost impossible for her to chase you down after this. Okay. Oh my god. This is so good. He does This works. The reason that this works is because he boogie hit a normal that's crazy. The, how did... Hmm. Maybe he thought Ibuki jumped forward and he just attempted to anti-air? That's ridiculous. That's such a weird situation. This had never occurred before. Maybe he thought Ibuki would try to do another knife? Right? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is to intercept a, a jump forward. But that's wild. Okay, Rush Punch is not plus. Staggered pressure. Right, that's the mix-up. Are, are, am I gonna hard hard kick again? Am I gonna am I gonna fierce or am I gonna just walk all the way in and throw you? Right. Unlike the last time, Shine's not hitting jab here. He's just chilling. Now he has a slight health advantage, so getting thrown in the middle of the screen, not really super bad, right? But we got to remember that he has the advan advantaged rush punch now. He has charged up rush punch. Okay, dash. This is interceptable. This is actually... Shine could react to this with a jab and take his turn. He chooses to chill. Conservative approach. Hmm. Oh. He goes for a big boy whiff punish. Like a little micro walk forward is too slow. This is so rough. This is exactly why you want to be close to, to, to Rog. If you let him charge this up, navigating the screen becomes almost impossible. Because it, like it's like, when are you going to get Rush Punch? Can you react? Can't jump. DMC Apocalypse. You miss music? Music is good. Music is good. Balrog's theme is always good. Appreciate... Appreciate, uh, appreciate in-game music. 50-50 again. No throw in this situation. Mm. This is a risky V-reversal. This is punishable. This is punishable, right? Because the... the 
I'm pretty sure the minimum amount of frame advantage you need to punish a throw or punish a V reversal on reaction is like seven frames or something. Like you can react. But generally you do not want to V reversal error attacks. Like if your opponent does an air attack or if they do a um, air special like this, usually these are double digits plus, right? So this is th this EX knife is this is going to be like plus 28 or something like that um this v reversal could get you okay it's plus what is, what even is this plus 10 plus 32 what is this it's a lot generally most people can react and punish you for doing a v reversal on a jump attack that's this is punishable Right here, this command dash is unsafe. Oh, Scramble City. He just get bullied. Bullied by staggered pressure. Um. We can really see that at the end there, right? Uh, Smug pretty much took advantage. Let me replay that. Let me replay that last sequence again. Smug took advantage of the fact that his health was high. He had games on him, right? He just went like he just did a really, he did a fake frame trap at the end, right? Let's find out. Was this frame trap real? Um, it doesn't necessarily... If it was fake, taking that risk is still within, like, way acceptable margin. Like, way within acceptable margins. Because Shine would have to win so many games. And Smug is on match point right here. Okay. This is difficult for Balrog to punish because he won't have charge. When you pass through the opponent, his charge goes away. I mean, theoretically, he could charge here. He just does jab into... Maybe he tries EX Rush Punch. This is potentially an EX Rush Punch attempt. Mm, nah, it looks like he just does back fierce. He doesn't press forward. Maybe he tried to light Rush Punch. We see down short... Charging, charging, charging. Jab, forward jab. Yeah, it looks like he tries a light rush punch here. It whiffs, and then he's just like, all right, I'm just going to fucking press fierce. Shine, again, goes for down, medium, kick, activate. This is like the main activation route. He's chosen the entire, entire set. And he just gets fucking duffed. Now Shine is in a really bad position, right? Like, this is... This is basically checkmate because if smug is going to have super So all he has to do is like one rush punch and he has super so he can force out a V reversal from Ibuki straight up and Without V trigger How's shine gonna get back in? Right, he can't take any more damage So he's in he's in danger of chip he can't activate, right? Smug is, is 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 winning in like every way. Smug could take like four or five anti airs right here too, right? Like, so he can just this double dash is like, dude, my health is so high. There's even if you check this dash, even if you do activate the V trigger, you're still gonna have to beat me in another situation afterwards, and I'm gonna have CA. This is the fakest. Look at this. Oh my god. Blop. He can afford the risk. Unless there's something matchup and unless there's something wrong specific, like after CC hard hard punch, your plus or something, that, that looked fake. I'm not gonna say I'm confident, but like he could he could take any amount of risk right there he wanted. Uh, interesting to see that in the set that shine won he was most active right 
but it seems like Shine has a tendency to be a little bit more conservative. And when Smug got ahead, he fell back into being conservative again. And at the point where he was like, oh shit, I need to do something, it was already too late. He couldn't take enough risk because he didn't have any games behind him, right? So Smug was just like, crush counter, stagger, crush counter, up, oh, rush punch, can't get in, my anti airs are immaculate, my spacing is hella good. Uh, I think, theoretically, if Shine continued to be more aggressive, they probably would have had a much more even match, right? Like, uh, they probably would have had a more of an equal game count. There were some critical, critical errors, like some suboptimal combos, combo and punish drops. Um, overall, Smug just had a little bit tighter. Tight. I don't want to. Eh, that's a weird term to use. He he didn't fuck up as much, basically. Right. He made le he just made less mistakes. And strategically, Shine was already playing into what Smug is. Smug if Smug is a player is like really aggressive and if you give him the chance he will take an opportunity away from you in like the most devious possible way right so shine is like all right i'm gonna chill out and smuggers is like i'm just gonna fucking eat that alive uh, if you look back like historically like if you look back um you can see smug play like play dudley and he just standing resets people all day he throw resets people it's crazy he's like famous for that right and he pretty much kind of did similar things with Rog in this match. Uh, you know, he doesn't have access to the huge overhead, but like staggered pressure, um, following up situations with dash, right? Um, overall, doing his pressure in a way that makes you hesitant, right? Because you're like, oh, I need to react. I need to react to potential rush punch potential walk forward right potential throw and he's he's mixing it up making it difficult and then boom he's, he dashes on top of you and you weren't ready uh, shine just got fucking ate alive man <laughs> that was, that set was kind of rough that set was kind of rough that was a pretty decent game though it really uh really interesting to see the interactions around Balrog's crouching medium kick smug would crouching medium kick and then walk back and then shine would forward roundhouse and there was a developing mix up there right so like smug would medium kick walk back shine was like oh if you're gonna walk back i'm gonna walk forward and then after shine started walking forward smug was like oh if you're gonna walk forward i'm gonna walk back and just immediately press my i'm i'm not gonna walk back i'm just gonna immediately press my button Excellent set. Uh, I learned about Balrogs. Personally, I learned about Balrogs. Stand hard kick. That shit is plus three, not minus three. Um, also learned that, man, you really need to optimize your combos. Hmm. I want to say something that like wraps up this whole thing neatly, but I don't really have anything to say. That's the story of how it goes around here. That's the story. <laughs> it there was an analysis. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. What are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do now? That shut. That that set was really short. Hmm. Maybe we just uh. Maybe we feed the cat. Right. Let's look at the request queue. Hold up. Where's the request queue? Whoa. Uh, we did this. This was. These are old, man. I w I've been kind of lazy, huh? Give the cat a treat. All right, we got to give the cat a treat. Uh, I will be right back. We'll have cat cam. <laughs> I'm going to change this to giving the cat a treat. Uh, shout out to everybody who came to hang out. We've been sitting down for a while. If you've been sitting down for a really long time, consider standing up because your health is hella important and sitting down, it's not good for you. You don't need to do nothing fancy. You know, just get up, wiggle around a little bit.
I have returned. And the cat is receiving the treat. This is the consequence of your 5,000 channel points. Behold, Kevin the cat having a tuna snack. I put some tuna fish in a Tupperware, and he is chowing down. This cat loves tuna fish. He's, he's crazy for it. He's face in. This is the cat having the tuna snack. Look at him. Majestic. He wears a bow tie. He's absolutely adorable. A little bow tie. A little bow tie. He is he he's uh Hey man, don't don't judge his eating technique. He, you know, he's chewing. Maybe. He's chilling. He has to uh, process it. You know, actually, fun facts about Kevin the cat. Uh, Kevin the cat is missing a great many teeth. I suppose uh, being outside and like starving in the wilderness damaged his teeth, right? So he does eat a little bit weird. He loves dry food. Like the kibble type food is his favorite, favorite thing. But uh, boy, does he have trouble eating it or fighting, maybe. Maybe. Kevin seems like a big old scaredy cat, though. He doesn't seem like a... seem to be much of a fighter. Yeah. Meow. What you want, Kev? He's chilling. He must be hungry. I fed him. He just eats. He doesn't overeat, though. Interestingly. He's always trying to beat me up for food. He's always trying to beat me up for food. And then I go and I feed him. He eats like two bites and he walks away from it. Anyway, Kev's going to enjoy his tuna snack. Um, I hope you appreciate your 5,000 channel points reward. I can't get the camera closer. Oh my god, it's a cat. Look at the cat. Kevin, say hello. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay. Hello. Is the camera straight up and down? I got a I got a little bubble measure. A level? I got a level. Let's check the level. Oh hey, that's pretty good. Okay, it's a little bit crooked. Hold up, hold up. I'm adjusting. I'll fix it later. Uh anyway, actually I think that's it for today, to be honest. We gave the cat a treat. Uh we looked at the replay. That set was really short. Like I, I, I'll be, I'll be real. I expected there to be a lot more, and it was kind of a, kind of a squash. Like that was kind of a very one-sided, very one-sided set. Um, we learned a lot, right? Now we know a little bit more about Balrog. We know a little bit more about Ibuki. Um, shout out to everybody who came to hang out. I really appreciate you guys. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. Um, shout out to all the subscriptions. Appreciate that. Shout out to Puppy. Shout out to B Mac. Um, shout outs to everybody who followed. Shout outs to Kyra. Cats love treats. Kevin loves tuna snacks. Uh, shout outs to Zaku. Shout outs to Isaac. Shout outs to Forrest. Uh, shout outs to shout outs. You guys are super sick. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Uh, I stream Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Usually we go to about 5, but uh, some, days is, some days is short, some days is long. T 
today happened to be particularly short, but I will be here tomorrow. On Wednesdays, we always do Street Fighter stuff, usually analysis. Uh, been a little bit of a pattern of like looking at tournaments, but also we do viewer replays and stuff like that. So if you have a replay, you're interested in getting it, getting it looked at, having a bunch of people check it out, uh, consider submitting a replay. All right, uh, we we learn together. On Thursdays, we do just fighting game stuff. I try to play a different fighting game every time. Uh, lately, I've been playing a little bit of Tekken to try to like figure out how to get Tekken online to work for me. And then on Fridays, we just kind of do whatever. RPGs are cool. I'm playing a lot of Dragon Quest. You would think I'd have something clever to say because like, you know, I do this all the time, but I still have no idea what I'm doing. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you guys. Have the best possible Wednesday you can have. Gonna end the stream a little bit early. You guys are super cool. Stay chillin'.